All set? Okay. Uh, I'm going to call uh, uh, this meeting to order the January 3rd, 1st, Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners meeting of the year. Uh, I'm Larry Kestenbaum, Washtenaw County Clerk, with Register of Deeds, and it is my responsibility at the beginning of each year to, to convene the first meeting of the board until, the, uh, until you all elect your chair. Uh, so our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Beeman. Present. Commissioner Hodge. Here. Commissioner Labar. Here. Commissioner Light. Present. Commissioner Macieski. Here. Commissioner Robbie. Commissioner Sanders. Present. Commissioner Scott. Here. Commissioner Somerville. Here. Thank you. All right. Everyone is present. Uh, let me make just, I have a few comments just as I usually do at the beginning of the year. Um, uh, I will remind you yet once again that there are nine commissioners representing a third of a million people in this county. Uh, and there are uh, many more points of view in this county than are represented around this table. Uh, and, I, and I urge you to open your minds to public comment and the views of the public outside of this room. There's, uh, more, there's more happening in this county, more ideas and, and more, uh, 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 you know, more perspectives than uh, uh, you might get from your colleagues. You have awesome responsibilities and let me put the emphasis here on the things that are boring. All the stuff that's important, the jail, taking care of our buildings, our clerical workers, restaurant inspections, making good appointments to all the boards and commissions that you have the authority to appoint to. When I was an Ingham County Commissioner, I used to talk about how an appointment to the Road Commission was a more important position than state representatives. Uh, and so the, the amount of responsibility that is, that is carried out by some of these appointed boards and so on is, is, is awesome. It is also an election year. And that's something that uh, we will all be involved in together. We're all, if you're seeking to uh, continue on this body or, or uh, uh, continue working with your in, your, in any really county or township elected office, uh, this is the year for going to the voters and getting that uh, getting your tenure extended. I am running for re-election. I imagine most of you are. Um, and we have, we're going to have an election process in, in, this, in this state, unlike what we've seen before. There will be nine days of early voting before every statewide election. We have three statewide elections scheduled this year for the presidential primary on February 27th, the regular primary in August, and the uh, general election in November. And all of those will be mass participation events, both here in the county and elsewhere. Um, and the the uh, I look forward to your uh, your, your participation in those things, and urge you to make sure your campaign finance reports are timely filed uh, in my office uh, uh, in order to avoid having uh, difficulties in that realm. Um, Let's continue on to public participation. Is there any member of the public who would like to come and speak? I see someone right away. Please identify yourself and, 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 and speak. Um, can you hear me? I, I can a little, there might be a button on the microphone. It, can you hear me? That's much oh, better. Okay. Hi everybody, happy new year. My name is Martha Young. I'm, uh, um, I live in Ann Arbor and um, I'm also a community mental health retiree. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner. And um, I have been with Community Mental Health since 1992, off and on as a temporary worker and um, uh, employee. And I retired officially in 2016, but I've been back three times since then. Every time my uh, coworker had a baby, I came back and worked. Uh, this time I came back uh, September 2022, and I haven't left yet because I can't stay away from the place. I love it. Um, 
and there's no end date in sight for me. Um, I First, I'd just like to thank you all for approving the bonus for employees making over a certain amount of money. Um, how can I say this? Uh, the psychiatric prescribers who work at community mental health and their nurse practitioners and psychiatrists, they're not doing this for money. If they were doing this for money, they'd be working in the private sector where we could be making two or three times the amount of money that we do. We do it because we love working with this population, caring for the chronically mentally ill, and we love working as a team with case managers. Um, so even though um, people may be making a certain amount of money or above, um, they were still putting themselves in the line of fire by coming in and working face-to-face -face with the clients during COVID, and they deserve it. It's just a validation, and it's been much appreciated. Um, I would just like to say, before my time is up, I am a temporary worker. I am making the same amount of money per hour that I did when I retired, but I'm not getting cost of living increases. I am not getting health insurance uh, retirement um, benefits. So I'm actually probably making less than I did when I was working here at Community Mental Health as an employee. I would just um, like to say I, we don't have contracts, temporary employees, and actually three of us psychiatric prescribers our retired CMH um, employees um, and are making less than we made when we were employees. So um, I'd like to, um, when you are working on the budget for community mental health, I'd like to encourage you to um, have uh, actual contracts for us that would lay out the cost of living, salary, uh, terms of employment, and things like that. I think that would be more professional. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'm proud to do my job. I love working with the um, community mental health population. If any of you have any questions, I would love to answer them. We're short staffed. We're short staffed on case managers and um, psychiatric prescribers. So um, this would be really beneficial in bringing people back to work. I think I'm done. Okay. Any questions that you have for me? Well, we'll have questions at the end of the public comment. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come and speak to the board? Anyone else? All right, now it's time for commissioner follow-up to pub public participation. Any commissioners wish to uh, speak? Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, this question may, I don't know if it's for human resources or administration. Um, related to the our uh, public comment speaker. Is this an issue that the commissioner should be taken up with or is this a HR slash labor? There are some components of this that uh, I, I would like not to talk about today. Uh, we had a conversation prior to the meeting and there are some action steps that we have Develop. So this is on my radar and I certainly will be responding. All right. Uh, the next item is liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports at this time? Then we'll proceed to the special order of business. The last item for me, the election of the chair of the board of commissioners. I uh, nominations are open for the position of chair of the board of commissioners. Commissioner Machiaski. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Justin Hodge for chair of the Board of Commissioners. Okay, Justin Hodge has been nominated and, uh, and supported. Is there any other nomination? Any other nomination? Any other nomination? If not, all those in favor of, of electing Commissioner Hodge as chair of the board for the coming year, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're back. Thank you, Clerk Kesterbaum. I always appreciate your service here and the words that you always have to share with us at the beginning of these uh, every year. Uh, hopefully you'll stick around. Hopefully the meeting doesn't take too long and we can all chat afterwards. Uh, I wanna thank my colleagues for your work with me over the last year. Uh, I've done my best as chair over the last year and I hope to do even better to help us have a great year in Washtenaw County. And I'm not going to keep us here too long tonight because I know uh, people want to get out of here and have a quick meeting. So now we'll move on to the next item on here. 
Uh, next item is election of a vice chairperson. Uh, so nominations for that are open. We look for someone to Commissioner Light. I would like to nominate uh, Commissioner Caroline Sanders for the position of vice chair. Okay, is there a second? There's, all right, any other nominations? You're not all in favor of electing Commissioner Sanders, vice chair of the Board of Commissioners? Say aye. 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 All right, well, there we go. It's nice to have the gavel again. Congratulations, Commissioner Sanders. Okay, uh, moves us on to the next item here, resolution adopting the rules and regulations of the Washington County Board of Commissioners. I, I would look for someone to move that. Oh, well, you want your note? Probably want your phone, that's more important. That's, that's, okay. Okay. Support. Okay, uh, is there any discussion on it? There are a number of items that were changed. Many of them were clerical in nature, got rid of a couple of typos. Uh, thank you for the team or to the team for working with me on that. You too, Michelle, sorry you can't be here with us tonight. Hope you're still watching. Yes, uh, Commissioner LaVar. Thanks, Chair. Um, one quick question, but I realize Michelle is not able to be here. Uh, it, it, we, can, we can follow up on it. The ex officio status for the chair, um, does that have any bearing on any ad hoc committees or subcommittees that we create that interface with state law? My suspicion is no, but I just want to verify. Bryce can answer this. It looks, uh, Bryce cannot. Bryce wants to tell me something. They are. Yeah. They, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you are all out of the frame, Commissioner Labar. It might be great to just move back. If you don't, yeah, you want to get in the frame there. Uh, Commissioner Sanders said to me that she had spoken to staff earlier and for the new year and the leap year, they had decided policy should change and I should not be uh, on camera. And so, um, I said to Caroline, that's that's hurtful and I'm sad, but- um, I'd like for you to be at the frame, you know, yes. it's- Yes, yes, um, I, I can follow up We can on follow that. up. I don't think from the conversations we've had that there's any bearing on that, but- Thanks. Oh, oh, Michelle is with us and we can bring Michelle in via Zoom. Bring her on in, Ashley. Uh, Good evening, everyone. My apologies for not being there tonight. I am under the weather, uh, but I can uh, answer your question, Commissioner Labar. It does not have any bearing on um, uh, entities established by, by state law or any of our subcommittees, ad hoc committees, as you suspected. And generally, the ex officio does not count towards quorum on any of the um, subcommittees or boards. Thank you. Commissioner Scott. Thank you, Chair. I just want to note that in um, Section H, I think 2, two H, um, we have a sequence of the meeting and we have crossed out citizen in favor of public. And I just want to note how much I appreciate this because I really want to hear from everybody residing in Washtenaw County, not just people who are quote unquote citizens. So thanks for making that change to make it more inclusive here. Thanks. Glad you like it. Commissioner Robbie. Thank you, Chair. I uh, just want to make sure I understand um, the ex officio piece. Um, is it currently practiced that the chair serves as ex officio of all subcommittees? Yeah, Michelle can jump in too, but that's been the practice and the language was a little unclear. Uh, we wanted to fix the language because it's what is clear if you read it is that the chair can designate anybody else to be ex officio, uh, but the practice has been the chair has been ex officio and can delegate that to anyone else as needed. We just made the language. I clear. never knew that that was something that the chair did, or I, I never understood that in the past, I guess. Is that really the past practice that the chair has been the ex officio on all committees? I know that there's ex officio positions on specific committees that the chair designates. That's been my understanding, Michelle. Get on mute and share some wisdom here. I, I would say that that is unclear. It is unclear whether it has been the practice. What is what does this mean in effect? I guess what being an ex officio does that mean? What does it mean? It just means you can go to the meeting. It doesn't affect quorum or give the person voting privileges. Like for example, when we were working through uh, senior services and increasing funding to senior services, uh, we had a conversation about me attending one of the Commission on Aging meetings just as an ex officio person. I mean, you can attend the meetings anyways. 
I mean, I, I guess I don't fundamentally disagree with this. I'm not against it, but it is a change from current practice, I believe. Michelle says unclear. Uh, are you done? Do you want me to go to somebody else? I have questions on another section, but I'm done with this part. Yeah. Okay. Is, my, uh, commissioner, is that a hand? So not about that. Commissioner Scott, is yours about this? I was just going to suggest that possibly being ex officio of those meetings means that if you are at that meeting, you're not there as a member of the public, but you could but go into a closed session since you are ex officio, so you could understand what was happening in those meetings, which is probably helpful for the chair of commissioners to be able to do. And that's been the practice such as the time I had to go into a closed session with CMH board. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You were at that one, Michelle. You know, you remember. Uh, anything else, Commissioner Robinson? Another section. No, another section. Okay. I missed this. We had, you know, we had a few weeks off. All right. Uh, we'll go to Commissioner Sanders now on a different topic. Sorry. Uh, I am concerned because we have public officials and offices that have been attacked um, and have been threatened with attack. And I don't think that this provides um, language that allows for the safety, um, not only of the public that are at our meetings, but also the safety of, of us as elected officials and our staff. So I'm concerned that we are basically, it's almost like, <clears throat> it's like, you know, saying that a PPO is going to stop somebody from doing some injury. And we know that that's not the case. So I am concerned with the language saying actual breach of peace and not having any language in there that talks about a threat of breach of peace. So before I ask if you have a uh amended potential language. I want to ask Michelle, is that to, is the way that it's written out to conform with state law or is there another reason why it's been that way? That's, excuse me, that's correct, Commissioner Hodge. The um, Open Meetings Act says that a person can only be removed from an open meeting for an actual breach of the peace. The definition of what an actual breach of the peace means is a little unclear from time to time, uh, but if we do have a, a threat, I think there is a conversation to be had on whether that amounts to an actual breach of the peace. Commissioner Sanders. Um, I, you know, I'll accept Michelle's um, answer, but I, you know, I do want it on the record that I'm not comfortable with it. I don't think that it secures the safety of, of those that are involved in these meetings. And I don't take for granted um, the threats that have occurred in DC in Lansing, um, and quite frankly, here to some degree. So I just want it on the record, because I would hate to have to change the county building name to Sanders if something happens after the fact, mm -hmm. so. Well, we certainly don't want that. Uh, okay, Any, anybody else on this particular section? Commissioner Light, I saw you first, and we'll get Machieski after that. Um, I was just gonna say that I do know that um, with parliamentary procedure. Um, if there is something that is occurring um, at the moment, there is always a time that I will call um, point of privilege. Um, and that could be anything going on from noise in the room, the temperature of the room, um, so that that whatever is going on can be disrupted or dismissed. And um, that in, in it's no vote that needs to be taken an individual if they are disrupting um, in any kind of way that's threatening that we could ask them to leave due to point of privilege. So we can keep that in mind as well. Are we trying to say something, Greg? I guess just to layer on Commissioner Light's uh, comments, we do have a set of security procedures and protocols that are in place. We don't 
uh, obviously don't talk about them uh, too broadly, but uh, rest assured that your safety is paramount for all of us. So anyone who is visiting a county building, certainly anyone who's attending this meeting, participating in this meeting, we wanna make sure that uh, everyone is safe and secure and we have strategies to do just that. All right, Commissioner Machieski. So maybe uh, along similar lines to what Commissioner Light just asked, is it solely up to the chair to determine what a breach of the peace is? And can the chair alone just determine that that's a breach of the peace and proceed with removal of the person? Is that, is that all that's needed, I guess, is my question. Uh, I don't know, if Michelle, do you know? I know that the chair can gavel people as out of order, including people in the audience. <laughs> I don't know if that's different than a breach of the peace. Yeah, again, a breach of the peace has has a very specific definition under the law. I don't have it at my fingertips right now, but I would think that the chair should consult with both Corporation Council and the administrator before declaring an actual breach of the peace. Okay. All right, Greg, you're breaching the peace right now. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, just one other thing, just for a note for the commissioners, we have removed individuals from this space in the past for security reasons. Commissioner Scott. Thanks, I just wanna mirror some of the, the concerns that Commissioner Sanders pointed out. Um, and I want to make sure that I um, thank the uh, county administrator and the sheriff's office for continuing to be a presence at this meeting um, and for supporting their presence at this meeting. It's very meaningful and I think that um, Commissioner Sanders, the concerns that you've raised are important. And I, I would be more interested at some point understanding what a breach of the peace is legally. I mean, not tonight, Michelle's feeling under the weather. Don't do that work right now, Michelle, get better. Um, as the resident nurse, I'm telling you, <laughs> get better. Um, but uh, but again, I just wanna speak in, in support of um, of what Commissioner Sanders is saying here and also uh, express my thanks again to the Sheriff's Office and the administration for being supportive of trying to keep us safe. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Robbie, I don't know if you had a hand for this or was your hand for something else? Something else. Again, anybody else on this piece? Round two, go ahead, Commissioner Sanders. Just clarity. So I was listening, but I think I might've missed it. Um, Commissioner Machieski asked the question about who determines whether or not it's a breach of peace. Michelle answered, but because that was brought up, I, I that I think that is important too, only because I've got a little history with um, not you as the chair, but. Um, <laughs> you know, where the chair didn't feel that my concerns were important. Yeah. And in fact, they were, uh, which is why we have sheriff's deputies present. So I'm just putting it out there that I, I would like to make sure that this isn't uh, left to like someone's personal interpretation of whether or not they feel safe if someone else is telling them that they don't, so. I think we will get clarity on from Michelle when she's returned around specifics on breaching of the peace. Okay. And the record will reflect that I have always taken your concern very seriously. Okay. Uh, anybody else for a different topic now? Or on this one, you got you, same thing? Yeah. Different? I give it to Commissioner Robbie because he was quicker on the draw. You can go to him. Yeah, it's no, go, go ahead. New Year, it's 2024. Are we doing things differently now? We're gonna we're gonna do it a little differently. Okay. Go ahead, Commissioner LeVar. He's uh, gracious. Yusuf is gracious. <laughs> uh, thank you, Yusuf. Um in 10B, the compensatory service, uh, there's a in item two, there's a there's a tiny inclusion of the word take that probably wants to be uh, removed, but more to the point, just a flag for folks. The stipends, we've got to change those ahead of the term that we're in. And so if we can just flag that and come back to that in the second half of the year, that would be helpful because I suspect with the four-year terms, uh, we may want to revise that. And I think those have been in place now um, since like 2011, maybe. Uh, so just to flag that. Thanks, Chair. You're welcome. You're still out of the frame. Well, you're kind of in there. Okay. 
All right, Commissioner Robbie. Nice sky blue sweater. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, work just for you. No. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I do agree with uh, Commissioner Labar's comments um, about the stipends uh, worth revisiting, definitely. Uh, my question, I, it's more of a, well, on multiple parts, but just wanted to clarify on the committee reports, is that like liaison reports or is that reports from committees to the board? It's liaison reports. Okay. We just changed the language to be in line with practice of, I've never asked anybody to submit a written report. All I've asked is for verbal liaison reports. Whoa. You're not gonna give us homework, are you? No, absolutely not. That's why I wanted to change it to just be okay. verbal. And cause it's been in our board rules that you're supposed to submit written reports all this time. And I said, well, that just doesn't happen. And I'm not gonna ask that. Okay, just wanted to make sure that that was what was intended. I'm fine with that. I just thought that this meant like the reports that committees submitted to us. Okay. Uh, and then my other question was the process for determining first reading. How does that currently work? Um, it looks like you're changing the word from recommendation to dispensation. That's a Michelle question, Michelle. On, just let me scroll to the language. <laughs> I think the intent and the, the practice has been um, for a recommendation from the county administrator. So I would I would recommend striking um, dispensation here. Okay. <clears throat> I, I, yeah, agree with that. I mean, that would pretty much maintain the language as it was previously, right? Well, someone wanted to make that change. Was it you, Brady? No, not you. Brady said, don't, don't put the spotlight on me. <laughs> uh, well, there, there was a typo um, that there was some extra language in there that uh, snuck its way into the last version of the rules. And so we could leave it as recommendation of the county administrator with approval of the chair um, or have it say dispensation as recommend, recommended by the county administrator and approved by the chair. Then your recommendation is to strike the dispensation piece. Um, I think it could go either way, honestly. I think it's six in one, half a dozen in the other. Okay. So I, I mean, I, I think it's fi probably fine the way it is. I mean, it's, it, it's but the process is basically the administrator is recommending and the chair approves and then it goes to second to just Correct. that's Correct. The, the language yes okay uh and then the i'm trying to understand why we made this change to the resolution uh indicating which department are we not going to have the departments indicated anymore of who submits the resolutions it says may be indicated brady is approaching the podium so this one was my suggestion that, so this language came around a couple years ago where uh, it was indicated if a commissioner sponsored an item on the resolution and it was indicated if which department prepared and, and specifically which um, uh, person, which individual prepared the item. So this is reverting back to prior practice because um, a year or two after that became practice, it was written out of the board rules that the sponsoring commissioner was no longer on the resolution. And it was recommended from staff and departments that um, multiple people were, were working on these resolutions and that because multiple people were working on them, one person was uncomfortable taking all the credit for it. So this is just going back to past practice where uh, the department head is listed on the cover memo where they are addressing the board of commissioners through the county administrator uh, and taking off the prepared by statement on the resolution. Okay. Um, so, so you're saying that, I mean, currently, we indicate who prepared the resolution though. Right? Correct. And and we don't want to do that because 
certain people don't want to get credit for all the credit or I guess that 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 was the indication that we had from staff yes I guess from a transparency perspective it would be it's helpful for me to know who wrote, wrote and, and it, it's it's one thing it, we can leave that language in there um it's uh as as Michelle said half dozen of one um you know six of the other it's it's Cross talk occurring. I think some ideas are percolating. It's going to fill the air with a little bit of sound while anybody else got a, a point while we wait here. Thank you, Brady. Thank you, Commissioner Rob. Anything else on this one? I mean, I, I guess I won't, you know, try to change anything, but I, I do think it's important to see who drafted resolutions. So, as a practice, I think we should, I mean, I know it says may instead of will. But I think, you know, I'm, I'm, when I read resolutions, I want to see who put the resolutions together on there. But I think the, the practice would be we, departments would still indicate who wrote it, right? That's why it's just made, it's not precluding anybody from having it indicated. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Scott wants to help. Can we still ask who the resolution was prepared by? Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. Brady's, yes, Brady, I think Brady's not indicated that that was never the intent. Was There was no intent to try to make it so we couldn't know who wrote mystery resolutions. What you got next? That's it? Oh, wow. Okay. Anybody else got anything? All right, Bryce, this is a roll call, as you informed me. Commissioner Hodge. Yes. Commissioner Labar. Yes. Commissioner Light. Yes. Commissioner Machieski. Yes. Commissioner Robbie. Commissioner Sanders. Yes. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Commissioner Somerville. Yes. Commissioner Beeman. Yes. Sure. All right. We have rules and regulations. Hooray. All right. Moving on to election of standing committee officers in accordance with the board rules and regulations that we just passed. Uh, so this refers to working session. So I would look for a nomination for chair of working session. Commissioner Robbie. Or a second. This is okay. okay, Commissioner Scott seconded. Any other nominations? Hearing none. All in favor of electing Commissioner Somerville chair of working session? Say aye. Aye. All right. Sounds unanimous to me. Congratulations, Commissioner Somerville. All right. Now I'm looking for vice nominations for vice chair of working session. Commissioner Scott. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Andy Labar for right. Vice Chair of Working Session. Very nice. There's support. Commissioner Light supported. Okay. Any other nominations? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations, Commissioner Labar. Okay. That moves us on to appointments. Uh, there are appointments. The appointments are to appoint all of us to various boards and commissions. They appear in your packet. Uh, would someone like to move the appointments? Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion of the appointments? Okay. Well then, Bryce, roll call it. Commissioner Labar. Yes. Commissioner Light. Yes. Commissioner Machieski. Yes. Commissioner Robbie. Commissioner Sanders. Yes. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Commissioner Somerville. Yes. Commissioner Beeman. Yes. Commissioner Hotch. Yes. All right. Appointments passed. Uh, very excited about this because we have no vacancies, no commissioner vacancies on any of our boards and committees. I, I think that's a, a worthwhile accomplishment because sometimes it can be challenging to work through all the scheduling, but we did it. Nice job, everybody. Thank you for your service. Okay, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Anyone want to move the consent agenda? Okay. Okay. Uh, there's no spicy communications. So uh, anybody want to discuss anything from the consent agenda? No discussion on that one. Okay. All in favor of approval of consent agenda? Aye. All right, boom, consent agenda passed. All right, moving right on, we have no resolutions. Uh, a report from the county administrator, you got a report for us? Just wanna say happy new year's to everyone. Uh, no report. Okay, great, thank you. A report from the chair of the board of commissioners. Uh, happy new year, everyone. I would say no report, we'll keep it going. And then items for current or future discussion. This is a new one, so this was passed. Uh, this is the oath of understanding of the, the standards of ethics for the Board of Commissioners. So you all have 
this here, right here. And this is the ethics, standards and ethics policy here. Uh, so everybody's read it already and commits to uh, upholding the highest standard of ethics here. So the way this is gonna work is I am going to read the oath uh, and there's a blank there, say your name, not mine, even though I will say mine. Uh, so we'll say it, we'll you know, repeat after me. Uh, then after that, you will sign it and give it to Bryce. You need to sign this and give it to Bryce to do, okay? Okay. We did not do this yet last year. We did not, but it was passed that we would have this, right? I'm gonna copy. Okay. Yeah, that's why there's no, there's no vote on it. We've already voted that we have to do it. So I'm gonna, everybody get ready to re re repeat the oath after me, ready? Oh. I, Justin Hodge, you say your name. I swear or affirm that I have received and reviewed the standards of ethics for the Board of Commissioners. I swear or affirm that I have received and reviewed the standard of ethics for the Board of Commissioners. That I understand the standard of ethics on this third day of January 2024. And that I understand the standard of ethics on this third day of January 2024. Fantastic. Please sign the oath and give it to Bryce before you leave today. Or before Bryce leaves. And with that... I move on to, yes, Commissioner Robbie. I have another item. Uh, I don't know. If, yeah, we we're under items for current. We are future. under items for current. Oh, do you have an item for current or future? It, it was just stuff. a quick thing. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say to you, I stepped out of the room to use the bathroom when the election happened for you. Oh. And, uh, and I apologize. If I were here, I would have voted yes. So I want to vote yes for the record. Congratulate you on being our chair for another year. Thank you. That's very nice of you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, uh, we will move on to pending items. There are none. And at that point, I look for somebody to move to adjourn. So moved. Four. All in favor? Aye. All right. Congratulations. Happy New Year. Okay.